So, yes, welcome. Yes, thank you. I've got a lot of this. <laughs> it's, it's rare for me to plan a class uh, because my usual thing is to try and respond directly to the people in front of me. Um, that being said, there are some sort of ubiquitous things that I can talk about that is appropriate for everyone. Yeah. So uh, my, my name is Mark J. Aquaviva. Um, I taught myself yoga when I was a kid, uh, slightly when I was seven, from a book. Uh, no idea what the book was, but it was um, Posture Pranayama Meditation. And then um, uh, when I was 30, I discovered the Scaravelli inspired thing, and that resonated with me. All the, all the other stuff that was going on didn't. didn't uh, I wasn't a fan of pushing myself around, uh, making shapes, that sort of thing. I wasn't a fan of trying hard. And then I um, found this Scaravelli inspired thing, which had this rather lovely idea that you let go and you get stronger and taller. And I thought, I'll have some of that. <laughs> um, little did I, did I know how much work was involved. In creating that, in creating the conditions that would allow that to happen. Um, if I'd known, I probably wouldn't have bothered. But once I started with that premise, it led to other things like um, ideas about using gravity as your friend, um, liberating the spine. Um, why, why, why not push yourself? Well, it's it's that's a non-violence. So uh, when I did my training, I, I started getting in, interested in the sort of qualitative aspects of yoga. And um, I, I think it didn't seem to be anyone else doing this but at the time, but I was applying the yamas and niyamas to physical practice, you know, kindness, wholehearted engagement. How do those two things marry up? Hmm, interesting, you know? So um, that's my background. And yeah, so uh, um, that was when I was 30, so that's 30 years ago now. And um, I've been teaching for 20. Uh, I've been running teacher trainings, that sort of thing. I'll tell you more about what I do later. Yeah, the, the, okay, so the, ba the baseline thing that I think I like to do is I like to help people find solutions. So it's not, it's not a standard kind of yoga class where I take you through your moves and then you feel good at the end and relax. It's more about um, being interested in the possibility of doing things differently. And why would we want to do anything differently? Well, have you um, ever heard that saying, you know, keep doing the same thing over and over again? keeps leading and you keep expecting a different result. Yeah. Maybe your dog pose is fantastic, but how many of you are still finding it hard in your shoulders? How many, how, how many of you still feel a bit stiff in the hamstrings? How many of you, you know what I mean? How long have you been stretching those hamstrings? Have you got any longer yet? Yeah. So there are solutions, that's what I like to bring. Um, I like to offer solutions to people. And the solutions are inevitably to do with changing your mind. Uh, I can give you some practical examples, but, um, but I wanna give you the overview first, just to invite you to um, engage with this class from not needing to know too much. And uh, most, um, I was thinking about this yesterday, but look, most yoga, the way we approach yoga, there's, there's many ways of approaching yoga. Uh, the most common way of approaching yoga in the, in the West is through the mind, through knowledge. So we learn stuff, we learn how to do postures, we learn anatomy, and then we do things. And Another way, um, the other side of the coin, is the kind of somatic experience. That I'll do what I feel like doing. And, um, and, and actually, you know, the, the dancing last night. People were in their bodies. They were in their bodies and enjoying and celebrating themselves, right? And there's a sort of somatic experience 
to that that, that makes you want to do it. And there are kinds of yoga that draw you in that direction too. Which one's right? You know, that, that was dancing. Uh, but there are forms of yoga that are about celebrating the body. But you also see people celebrating the body and kind of hurting themselves. Yeah. You see people holding postures, knowing exactly what they're doing, but they're hurting themselves. So what I like to be, what I like to offer, is some sort of bridge between understanding what we are doing so that the mind can adapt and, and change and you know progress. But it's based on somatic experience. It's based on the voice of the body. It's not, it's not a top-down process. The, the knowledge approach is a long process to get to some sort of embodied understanding of what's going on. The somatic approach, you get a somatic understanding really quickly, the, but the mind doesn't know what the hell's going on, doesn't care. <laughs> so what I like to do is bring some understanding to the nature. And this is the bottom line of what I believe Scaravelli inspired yoga is about. It's about discovering the nature, the true nature, the essential nature, not, not the agenda of the person, of the individual, of your life story, but the true nature of each essential being that lives at the center of this human being. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I like to try and offer. Um, okay, so the, over the years of my teaching and, and practice, um, you know, I did, I did the anatomy thing and I've, I've done all sorts of things. And the conclusion I've come to is it's really quite simple and it should hopefully resonate if you're into yoga. The conclusion I come to is that the way that we feel about our bodies, the way we experience our bodies, our direct somatic experience, is a direct function of how we feel about and how we engage with the world around us. See if that can land a little bit. The way you experience your body the way, the way you f feel within your body, it's not a random thing that your body is doing to you. Okay? It's your, you and your body are the same thing. Yoga is already there. It's already occurring. Right? The way you feel within your body is a direct reflection of your, the way you feel about life and therefore the way you engage with it. Does that make, does that make some sort of sense? Yeah. Okay, so I feel tired. So how do I feel? You know, how does my body feel? It's going to go with how feeling tired. I feel alert. What's my body doing? Yeah. It, it, the way our bodies talk to us is an indirect response to how we engage. And therein lies, I think, the solutions. I say I like to help people find solutions. And the starting point is to understand that the way the body works is not a function of this muscle, of that mechanism, of how the quadratus femoris and the obturatus gemellus externally turns your thigh bone whilst you're trying to do triangle pose. It's nothing to do, that's nothing to, not how the body works. The way those muscles work is because there's a person deciding to engage with life. So if you take your attention to the quality of your engagement, it starts to make it a bit more, a bit broader. So, you know, if you're talking to someone and you're violent in your communication, how well does that communication go? You know, what, do you get the result you're looking for in that conversation? To, to, to um, get the result you're looking for, you need to pay attention to and monitor the quality of your engagement in that conversation. Yeah? It's not different with your own body. And the things that we're relating to, it's very simple. Contact. 
and the space that we occupy. So the first thing I would like you to do, and I'll just take you into something, just so that we can, I'll get you moving before we, the brain fries, is see if you can observe what you're doing, not from the top down, not by thinking about what you're doing, organizing what you're doing from the brain, deciding to do it, and then feeling the outcome. Um, we did this uh, uh, the other day. I I'll show you what I mean. I'm a good yoga student, I'm going to do dog pose, so therefore I do all the things that dog pose entails. I spread my hands, I bend my wrists, I put my weight on my hands. I'm going to make the shape, so I make the shape. Dog pose done, come out. Whoa, fantastic. All right? Okay. If instead of me organizing my body from the top down, I organize my actions from within, from, I want to relax, I want to relax the spine. Mo uh, I can tell you now, most of our physical problems are because we carry our weights, our weight with our spines. We lift our weight, we hang our weight. We lift our weight, we hang our weight. Yeah? So, okay, so it's a broad, broad statement, so you don't have to agree with me or anything, but I'm, I'm just saying, from my perspective, you can solve all problems in your body, that knee joint, that elbow, that whatever, if you learn how to not carry your weight with your spine. It's not necessary. The breath can do it, which is what we're getting on to. So I'll show you another example. Okay, so if we can, instead of me working out what I'm doing to my body, I go into my body and experience what it feels like to touch the ground. I want to relax what it feels like, what it feels like, and I'm looking for support. I want to be in space in a way that leaves me free to breathe. So if I'm doing this, nothing much happens. But if I'm in my touch, so I've got my hands here, I've got my knees here, I've got my toes here, and I'm seeing if my actions with the earth can support me, as I breathe, as I release the breath, what happens is those outward actions lead to a sense of support in an inward direction. So I can start to move from there. I'll show you the first one again. I'll show you the second one. I don't know if they look any different to you. Yeah. Have a go at dog pose. And play with both. Do your dog pose by all means, but then have another go, taking your attention outside of that internal control thing into the quality of your touch, the sense of how you can support yourself from your touch, with as little effort, little violent, with as, not effort, with a, as little violence as possible. See what happens. It's good to compare. And the, the measure of support is can I let go into my contact and breathe? As in letting go into my contact is the source of the arriving breath. Can I let go into my contact and release the breath within me? If the breath falls out of you when you release the breath, your weight falls out of you as well, so you get heavy. Okay. So can I give my weight to my touch, my, my active touch, not my passive weight on the ground? Can I give my internal weight, that stuff that you're carrying on the inside, fluid, can I give that weight to my ground, to my touch, can I let go and breathe? Can I let go to breathe? And if, if when I release the breath, I can release within as I respond 
without. And you might find a situation where the mind is a little calm and you're able to assess what's going on in a different way. Good. Okay, thank you. Did anyone notice a qualitative difference in the two approaches? Did you compare? Yeah. Good. Which one do you prefer? Right, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you prefer the other one, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but uh, the, that second one, did you find a different place for the mind? Yeah? And does the mind feel a bit calmer now? Yeah. When you, when you were doing it, the mind was in charge, so the mind doesn't change. Nothing changes. But in that, ex it becomes an exploratory process. And in that exploration, you start to gain a bit of authority from your own body, as opposed to waiting for teacher to say you got it right. OK. okay. How's my timing say? I've probably gone on too long. Probably. OK, thank you. Right, uh, not too bad. OK, so, so how we experience our bodies is a function of how we feel about and engage with life. How we feel is reflected in how we breathe, isn't it? Yeah. And we have all sorts of breathing options available that, that fit the, the full gamut of emotional experience. But we normally wait until we have those emotions to experience those things. Yes. Now, I'll give you a, a brief example. Um, put your hands on your lower ribs. Relax your back. I can feel everyone being very good yogis. Relax your back. Okay. Take a breath, let it go. And then start to pant from your ribs. Open your eyes, because what it's not is, what it is, is so think of something funny. And then breathe all the way out. Now, when you breathed all the way out, was it, or was it, so let's do it again. <laughs> Trick yourself. Think of something stupid. Look at me. <laughs> that will do it. <laughs> and then let it all the way out with a smile. <sighs> then relax. Take a full breath in. Hold it for as long as you held it out. <sighs> Give it a bit of a squeeze and a stretch and a yawn. No one's looking really. And then let go. Ah. Oh. That's what I call pranayama. <laughs> the, the, the only advantage I, um, I gave that time, the moment I said think of something funny, you all knew how to do bastrika. Until then, it was a, a variation of grief. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and um, what is it? Um, trying to, you know, being, being Sergeant Major. <laughs> All sorts of things. And they, so, as, but those things are about ideas, you know? You know that when the mind imposes an idea of what you're doing, you learn how to do it and you just do it. If you can look for the nature of the thing, suddenly its reality kicks in. Let's do that one more time. Have a relaxed breath first. Make sure your back is relaxed. Okay, and then when you're ready, you start having a panting thing from your ribs. Relax the jaw, relax the face, open the eyes. Have, a, have an invisible smile in the corner of your eyes, see what happens. 
if it's really not working, think of something hilarious. Then suddenly it kicks in, right? Breathe all the way out, empty yourself. And then take a big breath in, hold it for as long as you emptied it, give it a bit of a squeeze as you enjoy the pressure of that breath within you, and then, ah, oh, nice cup of tea. Ah. Oh. Okay. Breath is a powerful thing. Um, before we go, go on, just notice how do your shoulders feel right now? Better? Did we do anything for shoulders? Because the body doesn't work like that. I've got tight shoulders. Not tight shoulders. Not tight shoulders. Well, stop doing that then. <laughs> <laughs> These peripheral po problems disappear when we are genuinely, wholeheartedly in our centres. And the breath is the thing that expresses that. The breath is the thing that you can turn to to find that. And it's not just pranayama, as in taking breath in and pushing breath out. It's about the way you breathe being related to how you are in space. That's what I was talking about when I was saying find something funny, as opposed to, yeah? It's, it's how we relate to this world that gives us our physical experience. Okay. How am I doing for time? Ten. Great. So um, that, uh, you know, when we took that big breath, <gasps> give it a squeeze, okay? Uh, that's called seat kari. So what I'd like you to do is follow me with this. Take a, slide the hands up the midline for you. And sort of get to a place where you can sort of be in space with your elbows, you know? You know, sort of got a pair of wings there that are trying to touch space and your chin lightly underneath your hands means you can be interested in where the face is and then what I'd like you to do is hook your fingers together slightly because I'd like you to be able to pull very slightly wide with your elbows as you smile the breath in making the sound seat that should move you in space because the heart's coming forwards. Now, before you pop, let the breath go like you've just had a nice cup of tea. <sighs> Seat Kari. Now try and do it in um, the usual yogic fashion. It's better if you join in in some sort of action, okay? So let's try it on one side. Lean over to your left, so your right elbow can come up, which is useful for me. I like to find gravitational-based ways of lifting, rather than lift, okay? And then what I'd like you to do is open your eyes and just very slightly, very slightly, peek out to the right. Very slightly listen out to the right as you breathe. Very slightly engage with space through that wing as you inhale to the right with the sound seat. The arm, the wing opens up and it's gonna drop behind you just as you have a nice cup of tea and go, ah. So you should find yourself turning. Now relax into the outcome. Your hand can, your left hand can be on your right knee. Your back hand can hook in your trousers or something. Relax into your hands, so your back isn't holding you up. Try and relax into your back so you can breathe. So leaning into the chair allows you to breathe. And still have that sort of smiling, breathing across the heart, breathing wide between your wings, feeling. So your arms will do something to widen. Less effort, more na nature. Give it a bit of a squeeze in the middle, like you just swallowed your tea, and then release the breath with a ah. And you should find that the ribs turn you a bit more when you do that. 
So try again. Try and relax your back, dropping into your sit bones, dropping behind you. When you do that, the hands can catch your weight as you widen in space to breathe. Seat. Pause. Just gather it in the middle like you just swallowed your tea. And then, ah. Oh, so the releasing breath can turn you. Let's try to come out of that. So leaning to the right, you can allow the left elbow to be light. Hand comes up to the throat. Open the eyes. Peek out cheekily to the left. Listen out attentively to the left. Breathe out through your, that wing to the left. It starts to turn you. And then that arm will drop behind you as you release the breath. <sighs> Take hold of yourself with your hands so you can relax your back. Now you can hook onto trousers. There's nothing wrong with supporting yourself. And when your back is relaxed, you can breathe into it. And if your back is relaxed, then you can widen from your hands to smile the breath across the heart and into the space either side of you, into the spaces you're listening to with the inhale. The arms can stay doing what they're doing for now, but then you swallow the tea. There's a gathering in the middle before you let go with a nice, ah. And you should find those ribs turning you by themselves. You can have a couple of goes, or if that's enough, you come back to the middle. Sikkari is the pranayama. But um, the instruction is you smile the breath across the heart, you release it away from you, so the heart stays light. And apparently, according to the Hatha Yoga Pratipika, if you do that for a year, you become a god of love. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love that sort of thing when I was doing my teacher training. I loved all the snake oil stuff. Can't, rem can't remember which one defeats death, but uh, I should look it up. <laughs> OK, so um, how's the body feeling? The upper body, at least, yeah? Feeling a bit more spacious. So what I'm doing is, it's an artifice, you know, I'm, I'm getting you to artificially engage with space, artificially engage with your pranayama. But um, what, hap what would happen if over there was some really good news? Yeah? How would that go? Someone you, 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 I've been dying to see you for so many years, and suddenly I spot you in the corner of my eye. <gasps> Yeah? Natural responses, heart-led responses. And I can't stay excited forever, so I also have to let go. Ah, how nice to see you. Yeah? It's looking for the nature of these things that will give you the answer in your yoga practice. No amount of doing anything to your body will make your body behave. Okay. Well, if it does, that's a very controlled life. How are we doing? Okay, not bad. So, we're going to, um, hmm. those of you that want to know the detail, crowd in, because you, you won't be able to see from a distance. Just, just come, come up and have a look. I'm, I'm gonna show you something. We're, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do uh, approach child, but uh, I'm gonna do, get you to do something interesting with the arms. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so. Okay, I, I was. Yeah, I need to be a bit more over here anyway. It's okay, you know. I'm not. I'm not. Um, you know, it doesn't. Uh, it's it's just if you want to see. There, there's a there's sort of qualities to these things that you'll miss at a distance. That's all. So, this um, wholehearted engagement from the heart. It's the, it activates the ribs, it, it, and when the ribs are activated, the thoracic spine is activated. When the thoracic spine is activated, you have the possibility of opening from the heart as you let go of the breath, <sighs> which is that Scaravelli-inspired thing, the holy grail. I let go, I get taller and stronger, right? So uh, for those of us that um, are stiff there, which is 90% of us, um, there's things you can do to awaken that. And this action, it involves 
action from the wing itself, a sort of gathering feeling, you know? Like, like you're pulling yourself with a rope or like you're, you're drawing a lover close to your chest or you know, some, something real. We're going to approach child pose with a similar thing. You can hang it all out so you can relax your hips. If that's uncomfortable in here, then you might need to just take your weight a little bit and, and draw it in because that'll make it that'll make it more comfortable to hang out. And then we're going to relax the spine through your shoulders. Now I don't mean pull your shoulders down your back. Please don't do that because that will pinch you in your kidneys and you'll be all, all adrenal in no time. Okay. What I mean is I want you to put your forearms on the ground and then hang back from them but use them as support so I'm, I'm sort of trying to drag my elbows towards me not with the elbows with the shoulders so I can hang out in the spine okay and then little by little as the spine gets longer in an unusual direction as that can drop through more and more you have to be careful not to be holding your head up or hanging your head off you need to come out of your head and be in your spine. And little by little, you can let it slip until you start to come to your, your, your thighs. Knees need to be a little bit wider. And I would like you to take your time so that the job isn't to get your sit bones on your heels. The job is to have space along the front of the spine, the heart open. And you might want to roll from side to side a little just to tuck yourself between your thighs and you want to end up with your rib cage sitting on your thighs your spine resting through your shoulders if your face is too heavy your arms are too far away if your forehead can be on the ground if your nose can touch the ground without being squished if you can give weight equally to elbows, head, knee and foot, then you'll be happy to relax. After that, I'm going to get you, once you've relaxed, I'm going to get you to do some pranayama. <laughs> okay. Was that clear? Thank you. So it takes a bit of time. So you start with your bum in the air and um, your thigh bones vertical so you can rest in, into the hips. No, no pulling of the tail down, you don't need to do that. Just um, see if you can find the structure where you can lean up into the hips through the, from the knees. So when, when you're on all fours, it's a good opportunity. It's not the posture, it's not that we don't want to get to the posture too quick. Right? Then you've got your forearms on the ground and as you hang back from your forearms, um, you'll move, but if you then add a bit of drawing your forearms towards you, it gives you a support to hang from. And it's that that will allow the upper spine to drop through. It's the pulling from the shoulders, not down your back, but just the using of the wings to suspend the spine between the shoulder blades that allows you to sink towards the ground from the throat, from the heart, as you allow the weight of the pelvis to drag you back. Now, you know, um, eventually you're going to sit down, so your arms might be actually dragged back by the weight, but you keep using that little pulling yourself towards feeling to help the upper spine open up. Uh, when you're starting to fold in the hips, if they feel tight, you just uh, move away from one side so you can tuck yourself in nicely on that side, and then you move away from the other side, so you roll from side to side. Uh, Van der Scaravelli, um, one of her quotes is, postures should be arrived at like a bumblebee looking for nectar on a flower. If when you arrive, there is weight, I want you to feel like you can give equal weight to both elbows through which the spine can drop. If you can lean into your elbows, then the weight on the forehead and the nose won't be too much. So you can rest your head. So if the elbows, weight on the elbows and the head is the same, 
you'll be able to relax the spine. Then surrender your weight as you breathe and there will be a rise. When you release the breath, can you release the breath from the heart? If you've decided to pull your tail down in order to make child pose, that won't happen. If you're allowing the spine to be free of that weight, and if you find that it's, nothing's happening in the upper spine, again, use your forearms, drag yourself forwards a bit so you're not so heavy on your base. Because we want the upper spine, we want the spine behind the heart, the thoracic spine, the spine within the rib cage, to relax towards the ground. We, it's the part of the spine we hang off all day, every day. It gets tired of it, doesn't like it. Let it rest through to the heart. And you've got an opportunity here, provided you haven't tucked your tail under. Good. If it's comfortable, then you can settle. The key thing is that your spine is relaxed and it's relaxing into elongation. That release of the breath between the shoulder blades, you can decide how you release the breath. If you can drop from the heart, that release of the breath will elongate the spine. When you drop from the lower back or when you drop from the neck, that won't happen. I'd like you to get the released experience of the upper spine dropping through support. If your elbows are not taking any weight, you're not supported. Your spine will have to take your weight. Basically, make your touch equal. Make your touch equal and taking your attention to your touch and making it equal will bring you into your body and out of your head. As you breathe and as you release into support. Good. Now when you're there, I'd like you to add a little bit of that pull and a, a widening feeling that goes with seat kari. So, you, so you're staying restful, but with the arms, you pull towards you slightly and you pull wide and you smile the breath across the heart. The head might come off the ground. Don't make it, but it might. Seat. Press down a little through your forearms so that you can rest into it and then let go of the breath. Nice cup of tea. <sighs> and that might help you find how the spine can drop. So do it again. You pull towards you and you widen. Smile the breath across the heart. In, in other words, smile, breathe into what you're doing. Retain a little bit, gather it in like a bit of a squeeze before ah, as you drop through those bones and then sort of refine the action so that it's the least amount of effort the least amount of engagement you need to have the experience of the spine dropping through your shoulders the action of the arms if you, towards you and wide that is the inhale so it's you breathing, and like a, like a yawn and a stretch, except the spine is relaxed. And the pull of the arms will pull the spine closer to the ground. And then when you release the breath, the spine's already closer to the ground, so you let go. When you've done it a few times, see if you can relax better. Good. So now forget about the top end. Just make sure you can rest in that direction. Take a nice full breath. Let it go. And now what I would like you to do is to rhythmically pull your navel back. Sort of forcibly emptying the breath by pulling your navel back. You have to relax in between. The breath will come in naturally because of the position. You don't have to try and breathe in. But get a rhythm going where you forcibly, I know you don't want to, but you forcibly pull your navel back against the spine and then let go to breathe. Whilst you do that, everything else relaxes. 
And if you can get a rhythm going, you might feel how the engagement sort of nudges you into the ground in various places. You might feel how the lower back is lifted by the action. You might notice stuff, but sort of relax into the outcome whilst you work hard to pull the navel back rhythmically. Good. Then breathe all the way out with the same effort. Before you breathe in, press down very slightly with your feet and your knees, and then take a full breath by landing on your feet and your knees. Hold it for as long as you squeeze the breath out. And then what you're going to do, you're going to pull yourself very slightly with your forearms and then just let the breath go within you as you move onto your hands and knees. <sighs> okay, we'll do that again because I know there's a lot of information. If you're not sure, watch and I'll show you what I mean so you get the timing. <laughs> so the, the fire breath thing where you're rhythmically pulling the belly back. It's just that. The rest of you relaxes. And then you empty. Before you breathe in, you press down slightly. Not, not enough to lift you, but just enough to feel the contact of the knees and the feet. So, you press down slightly. Whilst you're pressing down, you let go to breathe. Then when you let go to release the breath, you're already pressing down so you can give it to the ground and you'll empty in your belly without having to pull it back. That's when you move. Movement will be nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay? Try it again. Yes? No, um, it's nothing, uh, nothing to do with shapes. It's to do with feeling supported. So. I, I want your ribs to be on your knees to start with. Not important for this part, okay? So, so relax. If, you, if you get t um, knotted up in the head at all, give yourself a hug with the arms, that pulling towards feeling. Smile the breath in, nice cup of tea, <sighs> then the upper spine will release. The mind will probably release with it, okay? Then, when you're relaxed, Stay relaxed, start rhythmically pulling your navel back to help puff the breath out, fire breath. In this situation, you don't have to deliberately breathe in, you just relax. Do it a few times to get a rhythm going, to get an internal massage going, to get your spine jumping about without you doing it, to experience the changes in shape, the, the changes in contact. Okay, and then when you're ready, you breathe all the way out as far as you can, good. Before you let the breath flood in, press through your knees and feet slightly, and then just relax and fill yourself with the breath. Hold it for as long as you held the breath out. And then when you're ready, what you're going to do is you're gonna let go of the breath inside the belly. You just let go of it and move. Very good. I saw quite a few of you look, feel very light. It's a strange experience to not have to push yourself around. So that's where everyone gets confused. Okay. Come on to your knees for me. If that's okay, if it's hard, then put something soft on, underneath you. Okay. We're going to try a little trick. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to try and relax your back. You're probably holding yourself up, but try and relax your pelvis, try and relax your back. And then take a breath, let it go. When you're ready, you should feel that pulsing down through your knees, right? Can you feel it landing on your knees, yeah? Good, then breathe all the way out through your knees then. Keep it going. Make sure you're pressing down very slightly through your knees and your feet. Take a, a smiling breath into space. And what I'd like you to do is imagine there's a wall in front of you, you can't push, you can't push it away, but you use it. Okay, we'll do that one more time. 
On the second time, when you've done that, I don't want you to do anything else apart from release tension. Okay? So, relax. When you're ready, see if you can land it on your knees. All the way out. Press down, widen into space. And then just relax onto your hands. Did you know you didn't weigh that much? <laughs> Was that lighter? Lighter than your, your average dog pose? So how's that possible? How can, how can you weigh less? It's because the weight's not being outside of yourself. The weight is given, it stays within you and can be given through bones to your own touch. So what you're left with is the ability to support yourself just by touch. <sighs> that bit. <sighs> That's why they say spread your hands to do dog pose. But then people go, it's meaningless. You're doing something to your body. It's a function of support <sighs> from the center. So if you've got the idea, make it more natural rather than that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> rather than that, whilst you're on your knees, see if you can find a way of <sighs> giving the breath to your knees from within. So you can find a way of letting go of your back and from behind the navel, give <sighs> the release of the breath to the knees and the feet. <sighs> so your weight, it's not something, it's not about holding your pelvis, it's about letting go. <sighs> when you've got the weight on your knees and your feet, from your knees and your feet, you can smile into space. You can engage with space to bring yourself back to your heart. Oh. Oh. Um, am I the only one enjoying it that much? Oh. You know, you've got you to let go as it doesn't work. Because you're trying to get your heart to be the source of how you use your hands. Oh. Not me. Yeah? You're trying to get your heart to be the source of this outward action. If it's not working, stick out your tongue and glare at me. <laughs> That'll make something work, right? Okay, now let's find the nature again. Can you give from inside to your ground? Can you oh, oh, from inside to your ground? If you can, from your ground, can you smile in space? And then can you use space to come back to your heart? Ah, if you can, yeah, just move. Just move and enjoy. And you can lean into one hand and the heart can rest through to it. You lean into what the other hand and the heart can rest through to it. You'll find your ribs going in the other direction. If you can center in your heart, have a couple of giving it to your feet and hands all the way out. Before you breathe in, engage with hands and feet to support yourself, and then just relax to breathe as much as you like, whilst the hands and feet support you. Seat, and then nice cup of tea. And maybe that becomes the expression of the posture. Thank you. Good. I had a whole standing sequence for you, but I mean, I've, I've taken too long. But um, um, let's have a brief standing thing so we can see that it, it, it's not just making mat shapes. Let's, uh, let's stand. So try standing on a foot, balancing, doing your thing. Instantly, everyone's faces cave in. Yeah. 
Okay, now before you do that, take a breath in space, but a, a nice celebratory breath. Release it away from space ah, as you engage with the earth through that foot. Express it with your hand as well, because otherwise we're picking a leg up and that makes us very heavy, all right? So express it with your hand as well. That camera slipped. There we go. So, into space. A nice bit of gathering in, give it a bit of a squeeze before you land on that foot. But the foot has to engage with the earth. Express with your hand as well. Ah. Okay? When that is on the ground, keep the foot open so you can relax into it and receive the breath. Then you can let go again from within. See? So keep the foot open, relax, relax so you can breathe. The foot being open will let you breathe. And then you can give from within again, and the foot can... Now that's more like it. See what I mean? You're using the ground. You're using the ground. If it's not working, try this. And then, that's not when you do the posture. You open the foot, see if that supports you so you can relax to breathe. And then when you release the breath, you really sit within as you relax without. Do it again. Um, let, let's set it up so we're doing the pranayama first. So, <laughs> gather it into the center before you let go. Open that foot, let go. <sighs> if you can let go into the middle, you don't fall over. Okay? Okay, so I promised that your lower back would feel better. How does it feel? Has it made a difference? Yeah? Yesterday's class, I promised your upper back would feel better. Hopefully, I've included that. Yeah? Good. So, um, Q&A time. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to say, what, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to work one-to-one, -one, you know, uh, um, uh, one of the things I do is I help people out of habitual issues. So, you know, if you've got a problem with something, then ask, and I might be happy to answer for you. Okay, so any questions? Okay. Yes? So I have quite a stiff back. I've been told it's fused here. So even laying in bed at night, there's pain in my back. Beware of diagnosis. Yeah. Mm. I call it death by diagnosis. Um, uh, you can come here. <laughs> now, if you want to see, uh, it would be nicer, what's your name? Frederica. It would be nicer, nicer for Frederica, I think, if you were closer, because it makes it more personal. Um, if you're far away looking at what's going on, it's, it makes it hard. So, w when do you experience the back pain? Uh, all, all times? All the time, but when I sleep, I lay on my back, and so... It just hurts and I can get pins and needles in my fingers. Okay, so the way you, you support yourself is you hold yourself up here. I do. Right, yeah. because you hold yourself up here. Now, do you mind turning sideways? I'll take this off. No, it's yeah. fine. So th this is uh, a, a normal sort of good yogi's back, mm. right? <laughs> we hold ourselves up here and the breath is going to be because of that. And one of the things I said is we need to be able to relax the spine. <coughs> Most of us breathe by lifting with the spine. And then when we release the breath, we get heavy on the spine, okay? So lean into my hand. Not this bit. Just, just, just rest, yeah. So I'm giving you support. So let me support you. That's it. Now breathe into my hand. Make my hand bigger. Thank you. Good. Keep Do that a few times. Good. So breathe into my hand and hold the breath. Whilst you're holding the breath, see if you can organize your weight so that you're balanced over your base. So the front of the base will have a bit more weight. Good. 
Now release the breath inside of yourself. There's no pain, actually. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, so the breath. You found a way of breathing without holding your back up. Do it again, breathe into my hand. So imagine my support. So you're now holding a new shape. Let that go. Let that go. Let that go. Good. So, yeah. So notice if when you, there's a moment of let go just before the breath arrives. Yeah? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So in that moment, if you could drop into your base, into your feet, into your sit bones, if you could let go, let go of your base and allow the breath to arise from there. There you go. Much better. Mm. Okay. Do that a few times, and that allows you to breathe into your back, so I don't have to hold you there. Very good. That's a totally different shape. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't, yeah, don't, don't, yeah. don't repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so find it again. Okay, you lost it. Rest into my hand. Rest into my hand. Good. So can you let go into your base to receive the breath in your back? Very good. Okay. If you do that again. This time hold the breath for a moment. Don't hold your back. Hold the breath. Now, you've got your base, your feet, your set bones. What I want you to do is to let your base fall away from you as you release the breath inside of yourself. Fantastic. There's your core. Yeah. So now she's got core support instead of the spine holding her up. And she's not going, <laughs> that's not core support. That's you being tense. You've got a breathing pattern. Notice that when you've got that, these muscles kind of join in with letting go into your base as you breathe. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, sorted. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So one more. Yes. I think a lot of people get this problem. Mm -hmm. If this this things comes out, as mm -hmm. recently I noticed, and let it continue a slight pain is always. Of course, there. yeah. Yeah, so okay, so you need to stand for me. Stand with um, a bit sideways on and with this yeah. foot near me. That's it, good. Um, no yoga, please. No, just stand naturally like you would if you weren't doing yoga. Good. The, the weight wants to be mostly on this one for now. So, so we can get light on here. Okay. So it's your foot. It's a lovely foot. It's a kind foot. It's your foot. It's your touch. It's, no, it's your touch. It's your touch. It's your Good. No, 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 no. It's your, yeah. It's your touch. I want you to, no, 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 no. It's your foot. Imagine there's a small baby under there. Yeah. That's better. Good. So delicately. Good. And if you want to reorganize things, you, you just sort of leave that where it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. don't, don't agree with me because you come out of your body when you do that. Just be in your foot. Okay, and then just play with how the rest of the foot can be oh, wow. in relationship to that thing being lightly, restfully on the ground. Good. The rest of the foot. Good. Ah, now that's interesting. So now you've got some foot there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Easy, easy. You're looking for, to relax. You're looking to relax. Not be heavy. Don't be, don't be heavy. Oh. Don't be heavy. You're looking to relax into soft kind touch that goes through this new thing you found. You know, you've changed that yeah. to there, all right? So you want to find something that goes through there. Fantastic, from here. Uh-uh, just feel. These, oh, are your, yes, yes, yes. these are your bones. They yeah. support you better than all those muscles you're trying to lift with. Right? So breathe, breathe from being with this foot. Lovely, release the breath. But when you release the breath, allow the space on the inside to release away from it, up through you, when you release the breath. So breathe from this foot, land on this foot to breathe. Great, when you release the breath, let the breath empty away from the ground. Good, as you relax a bit, as you relax. Fantastic. Sorted. <laughs> so kindness, kindness and, yeah. and uh, sort of re, what's the word, uh, reclaiming. Uh, you've separated from this big toe because it's gone wrong. So make it the centre of your attention and then reorganise the rest of the body around it until it's happy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Good. How, how am I doing for time? It's, it's how am I doing for time, my love? Oh, sorry. It's until 11, your session. Right? It is. 28 minutes past. 28 minutes past, okay. 
Um, yes, I know. Um, oh, that's good. We've got another 10 minutes. So I can I can play with someone else who, who wants. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want, I've got other things to do as well. <laughs> yes. So I get a lot of tension in my left shoulder. It tends to like always rise higher than the other. Does it? I'm Does it? <laughs> I think I'm like totally relaxing and then I'll just and realize, goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is why we call it it. <laughs> so come, come sit. That's right. Uh, which one? This one. This one. Can you face uh, that face way? Up. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll be a little bit behind you. So round to the side in a sec. Is this okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So give me this hand. Mm -hmm. Chill out. So first thing, relax, 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 relax. Go to sleep. Three, two, one, back in the room. No. <laughs> right. It's just to take the control out, right? And uh, the reason we, we don't relax is because it hurts, so it's heavy, right? So relax kindly, so that you want your spine to relax. You don't want your head to hang off your spine. You want your spine to relax. So your spine is what you give to your hand. Good. And if you want to support yourself, when you use your hand, that should, instead of bracing all these joints, it should allow your shoulder to move. So when you use your hand for support, so open the eyes so you know what you're doing, you're looking for support from that hand. If you're leaning on a table, it wouldn't be this complicated. Right? There we go. So there's some bones. And you can lean a little bit of your weight from the spine, good, to your hand. Can you trust it? Yeah. Trust it more then. Good. Ah, oh, you can't quite. So trust it more. Find a place where you don't have to brace, where you can just use your hand. Good. So that you can drop into the hand to receive the breath. Good. Drop into the hand as you release the breath. Good. Now when you receive the breath, it wants to be cheerful. So you drop into the hand and there's a smile to the breath. Good, and when you release the breath, you don't want to get heavy with it. You want the breath to release away from you. Oh, fantastic. So until you've got some sort of relaxed association between the spine and that hand, feel that weight. I'd like you to move around in space without changing that weight. So you have to move from the spine. So it doesn't get any heavier as you get closer. It doesn't get any lighter as you move away. Just you and your touch, your spine, your breath, as you breathe and let go into what you're doing. Yeah, fantastic. How's your shoulder? That's cool. That's a different way of thinking about yeah. the movement. Because yeah. whilst it was, this is my shoulder, mm -hmm. that's what you're attacking. Right? For this not to be a problem, the whole of you, the whole of you needs to relate to this thing in a way that doesn't give it a problem. Mm -hmm. In fact, this can become the thing, the space, not the muscle, mm -hmm. the space through the breath, breathe into my fingers, release from my fingers to your hand. That's what we want. That's going to change it because it's the spine underneath it that needs to be free. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? Okay, thank you. Good. Um, wow, yeah, I've got all space for another one. Yes, what can I do? Low back, yeah. What, what, what's, um, what do you experience? Compressive pain, pain on back bones. Okay. Make sure this camera's in place because I keep missing it. There we go. It's compressive pain. Um, what did you say? What was the other thing you said? Pain on back bones. Back bends, yeah, well. Don't do that then. <laughs> um, lie on your back for me. Uh, feet on the floor. Okay. Um, let's take away all your learning. Uh, grasp your hands. Grasp your hands. Roll your shoulders up. Pull them into the ground above you. 
No, um, hands. You need hands. Like you're holding... No, uh, not yoga. You're holding onto a rope. I'm a rope. Hold on to me. Pull yourself closer with your shoulders, not your, not your elbows. Relax, relax. Pull yourself closer until your heart opens up. Pull. 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 Good. That's better. Pull into the ground to breathe. Pull into the ground to breathe. Good. So the heart can fill. Release the breath in the heart. Release in this space. As you give to the ground. Nice. No eyes down the nose. Be in the ground behind you. So your throat has space. So there's space between the heart and the brain. Breathe in that space. From the ground. From the ground. Use the ground to breathe. So you don't have to hold yourself up. Use the ground to breathe. Fantastic. Release into your heart. Release back through your head. Um, okay, so touch. Mm -hmm. Let's take this out. <coughs> That's better. Good. <coughs> Good. Hold me. Hold me with your foot. Make it a hand. Good. Hold me. Hold me. <coughs> Good. Draw me into. Draw my hand. Hold on to me. Good. Draw it into here. No, not with the grinds. Draw it from the inside. Draw it with a breath. It's not aggressive, not tug of war. It's feeding yourself. Draw it in. Good. Breathe it in. Then release the breath out. Don't kick away. Just release the breath out through your foot. What's that? Good. Like, like a hand. Good. So draw it in. Good. Release it out. Don't kick. Just out. Good. Compare this side to that one. Try. Draw in with the foot, draw into the inside, draw into the heart, draw into the heart, draw into the ground. Compress it in the heart, release from the heart, open out the foot, roll up, roll up. You, uh, mind got in the way. So next time, draw in with both feet. Space, 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 space on the inside. Draw, draw in, draw in with your feet. What are these things? Thank you. But draw it in here, so you're not pulling on your spine. Draw, not squishing it, drawing it in, drawing it in to the heart. Draw into your center. Good. Draw into your center, and then let go into your center. Thank you. Open out through the feet. Roll over. Good. Roll over. Good. How's your back? So from your feet, don't, don't push your back. If you want to relax your back, don't push it. From your feet, draw yourself towards your feet. Draw yourself towards your feet. Pull towards your feet. Pull towards your hands. Pull towards your hands. Good. Into your heart. Condense it in the heart. Release from the heart. Release out through hands and feet. Feet, 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 feet. Toes, toes. Good. Relax. Relax to breathe. But relax into your feet. Relax into your shoulders. Relax into your head to breathe. Relax into your touch. Drop into your touch to breathe. So you can breathe into your back. Fantastic. Release the breath within that. Fantastic, and move as, with your hands and feet. Stop, rest. How's that feel? <laughs> Confusing, right? <laughs> because it's not control. That's the difficult bit. But uh, I had to get, I had, I had to sort of, I had to blast you past everything you know so that you could get into the breath and the core and the wholehearted engagement and away from the problems. Because when we feel these problems, we fuss with them. And we do, we, we try it out, all oh, that hurts, all oh, that hurts, all oh, that hurts, all oh, that hurts. Why does that hurt? Why does that hurt? Why does that hurt? Why does that hurt? The solution is outside of the problem. So one more go. Hands up in the air. This time, uh, hold, hold your hands. Be in your hands. Be in your hands. Be in your ground. Make it equal. The mind will have to shut up. Mind can't do more than one thing. So if you're with your touch and your breathing, if you're with your hands and your breathing, if you're with your feet and your breathing, imagine breathing in from your hands and feet, but there will be something that goes on that goes with it. Good. When you release the breath, you release it into yourself. Good. Do that again. Imagine bringing the breath in from your hands and feet into your center. Release it in. As you release it inwards, that's when you open out your feet. That's when you move. 
out. That's when you open out your feet, your hands and your feet. So gather it in, hold it for a moment, know where your ground is. When you let it go inwards, open outwards. These things, open outwards. Okay, when you let it go inwards, open outwards into movement. You're allowed to move. It just doesn't have to be difficult for your back. Your breath can be the source of the movement. So land on your feet to breathe. Good. From your feet, empty back into your center to release the breath. Good. As you open out your feet, as you open out your feet, otherwise you've got nothing supporting you. Good. Okay? Does it feel better? Does it feel different? Well, you can arch your back to find out, but... <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Uh, the, there's pain in your back because you hold your lower back. Because you hold your lower back, your breath goes in a particular way. That version of the breath is essentially a stress breath. Yeah? The, the thing we're taught to do in yoga is essentially holding yourselves up. Yeah? It's okay to start with it, because we need to experience uprightness. But the, the point needs to be able to be able to let, to let go. We want to let go into what we want to achieve. We don't have to always pull and push ourselves around to get there. And the breath is the mechanism that you can help you find that. Working this out in your head, I can feel your head frying, right? <laughs> Working this out in your head is the hardest place. The best place to work it out is on this planet. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Good. So, um, yeah, uh, to, before I, uh, we'll finish off with a nice sort of self-soothing practice, but um, um, I, I, I'd just like to share with you, if you, if you want to work with me one-to-one, -one, you, uh, you can book a free 15-minute consultation so we can chat about what it is that you need and work out whether I can help or not, okay? Uh, you, you just book it on the website, it's free, uh, pick a time, there's a couple of days a week I do it. Um, I also do, uh, um, and, uh, and if you want to take it further, then we can book some sessions. And I do weekly workshops uh, every Saturday for, that you can um, join with membership or just drop in on Zoom. To, to, on, on Zoom. It's, all, it's all online at the moment. And uh, what else do I do? Uh, I've got a course coming up that I'm Sacred Breath. I'm, I'm doing a course at the end of October online. It's going to be a week's retreat. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's all, uh, you'll find it. You'll find my adver advertisement on the brochure, so you can find me. All right. So uh, I think a, a rolling round practice. But what I'd like you to do is we're, we're going to play with lying down and rolling around. Okay. But I'd like you to, in person, I'd like you to explore this this sensation, and you can you can play with the pranayamas. You can and you can if you like. But it's a, basically, it's about the breath itself relating to contact. So, you know, as you roll around, you want to relax, but from within, I want you to find these ways of engaging with the points of contact you make with the earth through the arriving breath, so that you can release within with the release of the breath. And just see how that goes as you approach twisting. When I say see, I don't mean turn your head to have a look. Be in the whole body experience of the breath actively relating to the ground as a way of supporting you in movement. The arriving breath and the releasing breath. If you feel like you're pulling on your spine, you might have to pause, do a few <laughs> press into the ground as you so that you can relax to breathe. And then let go. And when you let go, you'll find the spine is a little more mobile. So it's up to you um, how you engage with this. Uh, the, the pranayamas are to just wake up the responses. The thing that's going to do the job is when your breath is sourced in you relating to your ground, wherever it happens to be in this moment. So if you hit a snag, 
don't fall over, pause just before that snag, have a breath by pressing into the ground, have, a, have an inhale by pressing into the ground, and you'll find your core and ribs working to do that. And then when you release the breath inside of that, you can let go into the ground and you'll find yourself moving. If you let go in space, you'll fall over. If your back is snagging, the core has to work more, so you might have to do a few more fire breaths to wake things up. If your neck is snagging, it's because your, your ribs are not moving. So you need to find a more wholehearted engagement with space through your wings and the seat and the car. And that becomes an embrace of the earth with the upper body and the head. So that we can begin to move from the spine as opposed to pushing it around into funny shapes and carrying our weight with it. We take the weight off, we release the spine. It starts to become mobile because we take the strain off it. The breath itself becomes the source of our movement and support. And within that, you can awaken the spine behind the heart. And that's when you're expressing in space. Good, okay, now let's, uh, let's structure this a little. Uh, just, uh, I've got 15 minutes away? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so watch for a moment if you don't mind. So, if you're turning, to the, turning your head to the right, I would like you to, Sorry, oh, no. I thought I heard someone saying something. Um, if you're turning your head to the right, rather than pulling your head round, I'd like you to pull your ribs round. So you're doing a sort of banana shape. The head will come round because of the ribs. It's not you turning your head, all right? You leave the arm behind. You bring the, a foot to the floor. You cross the other leg over. And all the time, these ribs are working. So if you can find a way of holding that, it's because you're breathing what you're doing. You'll be breathing into the ground on the opposite side. And when you release the breath, these ribs will drop into the ground on the opposite side. Then you cross your legs, and the ribs on the other side, let me turn around. Then the ribs on the other side, kind of take hold of that leg. If, if, you, if you work these other ribs, it does something with that leg, you see? So you take the, the other ribs, it gives you support between the legs. Does that make any sense to anyone? Say again. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to turn from the ribs. So instead of turning the neck, I want you to side bend with the ribs, and when your head is rested back and relaxed, that will make the head roll round. But you're side bending, okay? Then, instead of just falling into a twist with a side bend, if you then use the opposite ribs, what it does is it makes the legs become part of your support, okay? And you'll be working hard from your ribs, but within that, once you've organized that whole thing, if you can still breathe, and the way to breathe is by pressing into the ground, when you let go, you let go inwards, and you let go outwards. And you'll be in, it should be an interesting experience. Do you want to confuse it? Okay, so yeah, if everyone follows me, uh, A, B, C style. So. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. So. Everyone um, lay out the right arm. Make sure there's a bit of space underneath the shoulder for, for right, okay? Relax the face open, relax the throat open, uh, rest the head back, nothing in the neck, okay? Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna sort of pull yourself round to the right using your right ribs. And if your head stays relaxed, it will be pulled round 
as, it, as the back of it sticks to the ground. Okay, so if you pull your right ribs together, it will pull you round to the right. So now you've got your, your head resting on the, towards the right ear, the right arm on the ground, and the ribs doing something in the other direction. See if you can uh, drop into your ground to breathe what you're doing. What will happen is you'll breathe the opposite side. And when you release the breath into what you're doing, those ribs on the right will work naturally. Okay. Now, cross the right leg over the left. And before you go anywhere, just play with n nudging the left ribs together. And notice that, that with the legs crossed, that moves the crossed leg foot around when you do that. When you nudge the ribs together on the opposite side to pull you back from your side bend. Yeah? When you use the opposite ribs, the opposite ribs, the left ribs, when you use those ribs, on the other side of the basset, it does something to those legs. Okay? So as the knees drop over, if, you, if you're using the right ribs, your head will be to the right and relaxed. If you're using the left ribs, you'll be able to relax in the legs and the groins and use the, use the support. You need to find the ground with the feet somewhere. All of that work in your ribs will make you feel like you can't breathe. So if you press into the ground to breathe with that going on, it'll be possible. And then when you release the breath, just let go. Let go inwards, let go outwards. See what happens. And then as you surrender to your ground, you might notice the part of the breath that the ribs are involved with. This broadening sense as you smile the breath across the heart without trying. And this coming together feeling away from your wings, away from your head, as the ribs settle. And if, if the rotation is coming from the ribs, it shouldn't be a, a, a nasty pull on the base of the spine. If there is pull on the groins and the base of the spine, then a couple of gentle emptying of the bellies. Give that to the ground and breathe. Breathe with a sense of empty, the emptying connected to the ground, then when you let go in, in again, the belly will empty better and you'll have more space. And we'll try the other side. So when you're ready, left arm out to the left, find your left ribs to pull your head round to the left. Do it a few times to find the breathing action, the released, the exhale action. Until you're resting back through the left ear, the left arm. Cross the left leg over the right. If it's already complicated in the lower half, then a few belly emptyings will help. <laughs> but the thing is, you need to breathe from the ground. With all this core activity, it feels like you can't breathe unless you embrace the earth. If you do that, then you'll be able to breathe. And then those right ribs will take hold of those legs and make them squeeze together a bit. I don't want you to do that with your legs. I want your ribs to do it. So that if the feet find some purchase, you've got support at both ends. So you're turning your head to the left because the left ribs are pulling the head round with the left arm out to the side. You cross the left leg over the right and the knees drop to the right. But in order to feel supported, the right ribs do the work. And it's all to do with your ground, so breathe into your ground. Then when, when you've done that, when you release, release inwards, but release outwards. Let go inwards and let go outwards. So you let go. See what happens. Thank you. So another embrace of the earth to breathe, and then when you release the breath, just gather it into the center, make sure that the breath empties within you, and then you can roll around back to whatever you like. Um, I think we're gonna finish with um, a yoga nidra or, some, or sorts, or it could be a seated practice, it's up to you. I don't mind, it will be the same instructions for either. So if you want to relax and lie down, then do so. If you want to sit, then do so.
If you're seated, make sure that you're not holding yourself up. And the way to work that out is to um, make sure that the weight is evenly distributed over your base. So for most people, it would be a lot more forwards than you're used to. Now you can put your hands on your thighs and that will help you re relax the upper body. If you lean your spine into your hands a bit. For those of you lying down, again, be with your contact with the earth. Each point of contact, the back of the head, and some part of the elbows or the arms, the base of the spine, the heels most definitely. And what I'd like all of us to do now is to imagine that the breath isn't something that happens to us. I'd like you to imagine that the breath is what the earth is doing. So when the earth takes a breath, that it expands up into you. And you can allow that the earth's breath to enter you from below. Once it's entered, you leave it there. Because when the earth exhales, it falls away from you. And you let your base fall away from, from you with it. So what happens to that breath you've received from the earth is it dissolves inwards. It dissolves within you. You can't do this with your head. You have to, the only way to experience it is to, is to go there with your imagination. So that let go allows the breath, the, the earth to breathe into you. And the let go of your base, as you, as you, as you allow your bones to fall away from you with the earth as it deflates, will cause you to absorb the breath you've just received within you. that breath that the earth takes also expands into the, into the atmosphere around you, as far as the clouds, as far as the stratosphere. So it's also enveloping the whole of you. And if you can get a sense of the earth's breath all about you, then that breath falls through you and back through the earth as you let go. And if you can sense that coursing through you from above into, into you, into your center, into your heart, into your throat, into your third eye, solar plexus, below the navel, in the root, in the crown, can you allow the earth's breath to enter you, fall into you and dissolve through you? as the earth releases its breath. If you can, then it can simplify into centering in your heart. That space between the lungs. The arriving breath doesn't want to be a struggle for the lungs lungs so all, all it is is a release it's a release at the heart and the whole of you can expand with the earth's breath into the space all around you without you having to do anything it's a release of tension as the earth's breath drops back into your heart you let go into that center and as it dissolves through you, you might start to feel a threading sensation through your very center, your spine itself, that travels between heart, root and crown. As the soft sigh of the release of the breath moves through the spine. But also through your entire structure, through ending up through fingers and toes, and once again out into space every time you let go.
The heart is a quiet space at the very centre of all things, around which all activity occurs. Your job is to stay there, rest into it. Let go of the body all around it. Until the heart space and everything around you are no longer disconnected. Okay, that's time I'm afraid. Thank you so much. Hope that was interesting, if not useful. <laughs> I hope it was useful too. Thank you. Lots of, lots of soft massaged face eyes. It's very nice to see, thank you. Stay in touch, uh, get onto the website, become a free member, and uh, you'll, you'll see um, these recordings. You, you'll have access to recordings of, these, of my two sessions here, okay? And uh, if you want to do anything else with me, just book a free 15 minutes. What you've got to lose, you know? I might help, okay? Thank you. <laughs>